We recorded that album and we had debt after sure. that. We had serious debt. People are being blessed. It's, people are calling it a game changer. <laughs> people are like, Yo. whoa, oh. this is incredible. You guys really went all out. And you're like, you we did. <laughs> Wellness family, my name is Mpumila Dwaba, and welcome to another episode. I am ridiculously excited, everything in me is jumping. I don't even know if she needs a formal introduction, but all I can say is in the shadow of your wings. <laughs> Today, I am sitting with international gospel star, award winning mother, wife, founder of Coco Records, and dog or Zombambo. Hey, hey girl. <laughs> I feel like I can already say hey, girl, based on our conversation earlier. Yes. Like we're, we're girls now. We are. Girl. I want to talk about loss. Um, I mean, you. It does feel recent. Yeah. Recently lost your, your mother. And it feels, I think, from the outside, it looked like it was very unexpected. Yeah. How have you been dealing with that loss? Do you ever come to, especially because you've been, I believe you have such a, you had such a close relationship with her. Um, and we, we, we have faith. We believe mm. us. We believe God, you should come through. And now what happens when it doesn't, doesn't feel like, he, yeah, it doesn't feel like he came through. Yeah, yeah, that was that was a difficult one. Yeah. Um as I remember someone asked asked me this one day, um how did you deal with your mother's passing and I said uh, I'm still dealing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's not something that you just go through and then it's over yeah, and then that's like it and then it's so the sharp. Yeah. Uh, and that's it, you know. Um it's been 2 years, but mm. it still feels like yesterday. You know, and um, the the I think the thing that made it worse was the fact that it happened during the pandemic. Yeah. You know, and like back then it was very it strict. Was tr yeah. Um, so we never got a chance to say goodbye. We never got sure. to see her. Oh my. Um, we literally took her to the hospital, and that was the last time we ever got to see to see her. You know, and then that was it. And then suddenly you get a phone call to her. Agaseko. You know, and then you're like. What do you mean? Oh, what do you mean? Yeah. And we were praying. We had Abba Faith. Zalwane, mm. who we would call and send messages to. Would see, you know, please pray, do mm. this. Um, this is what the doctors are saying now. And, and so you were hopeful, extremely, you extremely think, hopeful. Yeah, you know, and it honestly came as a shock. Would sure. see how how can a person who was here today suddenly be gone, be gone. tomorrow? Mm. It doesn't make sense at all. And honestly, I can say. Um, it's it's such a blessing to be surrounded by family, yeah. by friends, um, you know, by people who, by even church, yeah. man. Um, our pastor was just um, there for us yeah. during that time because, I mean, everybody knew that my mom and I were literally yeah. two amigos. Like <laughs> twins, <laughs> even, like Niafana. Exactly. Okay. We never separated. She was always there. Yeah. And um, so it was such a difficult process. It was such a difficult time. I always say um, that grief can be so crippling sometimes. Mm. You feel like you can't move. You mm. feel stuck in the same position and you don't know what to do. Yeah. You know, you want to get out, but, but you can't. Yeah. You know, How do you I feel do like your, your, your legs have been cut off. You mm. want to stand, but something's just stopping you from moving on. And, and it, Honestly, it's still a journey. Yeah. I'm not 100% okay with it. Yeah. I, you know, I still feel the pain. It still aches. Yeah. And I've heard people whose parents have passed on 10, 15 years ago, and they told me that I get kulek. 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 It's something that you just learn to live with. Mm. It's not something you get over, but you learn to live with it. Sure. And... Did you ever, did you ever feel like you don't want to go on? Like, cause I know you went black on social media. Yeah. You completely went off. And I think we're all thinking, okay, is she coming back? And you took your time, which is really, really good. But it's yeah. not something we do nowadays. Did you ever feel like I actually just don't want to do this anymore? I, I don't want to minister to other people anymore. I, I just want to sit here. I actually did. Okay. I did. I was like. I'm done. I tap out. <laughs> tap out of what? Like, I'm just, life. I was tapping out of ministry, tapping out of the singing. I was like, what's the point? Sure. 
it, you you uttered those words and yes. said what's the point why why am i doing this no. why do i have to go through this why why her mm. you know why specifically her and the weird thing is that um year before in 2019 my mom and i um, she comes to my house this one day and she's all excited. Oti, um, Lalela Gel, uh, Gene Bible School. As again. I'm like, but ma, I don't want to. She's like, hey, <laughs> <laughs> we are doing Bible school together. Halfway through, then she passed on. Oh, no. So now you I have to like, continue. Like, dude, I was like, what is going on here? How am I going to carry on? When this person is no longer here, she was the one that told me to do this. Yeah. Like, now, say, 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 to say, 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 passed away in, I think in June, end yeah. of June. Mm. Um, so, and then there's an exam in August as well. Mm. So I remember on the morning, um, on the week, on, on the actual day of the original exam, um, I couldn't write. I told my, 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 I sent an email to my dean during the week. I was yeah, like, I can't, I can't do, do this. It, yeah. Can I just get an extra week? And she was like, okay, fine. We'll give you an extra week. Um, you can write the following week. And then, sure. and then I was like, okay, thank you so much. Following week, so I can't ask for another extension. Yeah, you just <laughs> it's either I write the oh, exam yeah, yeah, or I just don't. leave it alone. Yeah, and then on the morning, I get sent a text from school, and then they tell me that um, my exam is actually in the auditorium that we were in with my mom. Yeah, so I was like, <sighs> at that moment, I just broke down, I just couldn't handle it, and it was on the morning of the exam. I remember, so hubby comes, and I'd woke up, I'm more of a, when I study, I, I, I like to study early hours. Okay. <laughs> that, I'm that okay. kind of person. Okay. okay. So it was early in the morning, yeah. and hubby had just woken up as well, mm. and so he comes to me, he says, are you okay? I'm like, no, I'm not okay. Mm. Let's see what's going on. I'm like, but why are we writing in that yeah. auditorium? Yeah. Of all the places, yeah. why that one? Mm. You know, and he's like, uh, you do realize that you don't have to write the exam if you don't want to. So, so for this first time, it felt like I was presented with an option. Yeah, like you can be freed. He's like, you don't have to do mm. it. Um, you don't have to prove anything to anyone. Oh, man. You don't have to... We love you all the same and mm. we're proud of you all the same. Mm. Nothing if changes. You don't, nothing changes. Mm. This doesn't make you a bad person. Mm. You don't have to do it. Sure. And for some reason, when I was presented with an option, I still wanted to do it. Oh, man. Because you know when you're, you're fighting so hard to do something because you're like, no, I have to, mm. like, mm. I have to, have to. Mm. But the minute I was presented with the option that then you, realize, you don't have to, yeah, I'm like, actually, oh, okay, I don't have to do it. But actually, I still do want to do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I wrote the exam and I did pretty good. Really? Yeah. Well done. Which was kind of interesting because halfway through, I just bawled. <laughs> I was like, eh. <laughs> I can't do this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Please, man, <laughs> don't crack me. <laughs> <laughs> I promise yeah. you, you know, and somehow God is able to cover us even in our weakness. You know how, sure. how scripture says that his strength is made perfect yeah. in our weakness. Yeah. I literally experienced that. Sure. And it took a while for me to get to a point where I was actually ready to minister mm. again to people mm. because I felt like I was so broken. Yeah, like what do you say? I had nothing, nothing to, to give. give. Yeah, I yeah. was absolutely empty. Yeah, um, because I reached the point where I I didn't even want to pray. Yeah, you know, because yeah. I was like, so teeny. Teeny. yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, kind of vibe. Yeah. What am I gonna say? And um, for me, I always say I I. I well, I don't always say that's just me lying, but <laughs> <laughs> pretend you always say. <laughs> <laughs> but I think you know how God sends you certain people when you're going through something. Yeah. People who will just be like, Girl, "Know how to lift you." It's, yeah, it's okay. Yeah, Come, we've got you. Yeah, you know. And God sent people like that in my way. You know, who are like, "We've been through this. Mm. We understand exactly we've what you're going you. through. 
we've got you. We will, sure. we will hold your hand through it all mm. and you will find your strength again. And, sure. and I'm just grateful for that. Sure. Yeah. How has it changed your mothering? Oh, how has it changed? Oh, it absolutely has changed my mothering, mm. losing my mommy. Um, I find that in my grief, I was, I made sure, I said this to one of my friends actually, that I made sure that I was honest with my girls. Okay. Okay. About my grief process and yeah. what I went through. Yeah. Because reason being, I felt like I was caught off guard. Yeah. Yeah. Because it was so foreign to me. My mother's mom passed away as well. I think I was a teenager oh, as, okay. uh, at that time. Mm. <clears throat> but I don't remember seeing my mom grief. Mm. I don't remember mm. seeing her go through the process mm. of the grief. Mm. I feel like she tried to hide it so much from, you. from, from the family yeah. from me that I didn't know what to expect. I was caught off guard. It sure. felt like something How do we I'd deal never seen. Yeah. yeah. It felt like something I'd never seen before. And don't get me wrong, I don't blame my mom. My mother's an incredible woman. Yeah. Yeah. And she was an amazing mother. Yeah. Um, it's just how things ex were then. Exactly. Yeah. Back then, That's just how she probably were. did that because she thought she was protecting, protecting you. Us. Yeah, everything you was know, about exactly. protection. Yeah, it was always about that. That yeah. I'm gagging and I mustn't see you crying. Yes, I mustn't see you yes. crumbling. You must um, be strong. Exactly. Yeah. But I feel I felt like I needed to be vulnerable in front of my kids so yeah. that they could see that it's okay yeah. to be vulnerable. Yeah. You don't always have to be strong. I love that. Um, it's okay to be vulnerable. If you're going through stuff, it's fine. We'll get through it together. Mm. You know, sometimes they come in my room and be like, mommy, you need to eat. Um, oh. They bring me food. They'd come and sit with me mm. on, on my bed. Because some days I didn't even want to get out of the bed. Sure. But, but they would come and sit with me and we'd just sit and hug and just, not That's say it. anything. That's it. And that would be enough for me at that moment. Yeah. And it was so important that they see it so that they understand that vulnerability isn't weakness. Weakness, yeah. Yeah. Vulnerility yeah. is not weakness. But there is such profound strength. Yeah. In vulnerability yeah, that's where the in a is. safe space. space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love I love that you mentioned that sometimes all we did is sit and I'll say anything, that's all I needed. Because I've yeah. always struggled with how to be there for someone. Mm. I'm very solution-based. So every time someone goes through something, it's either I have the solution and I can bring it, or I literally like hide, which is the worst <laughs> worst thing ever. But you, I, you just pinpointed something and it just really landed that sometimes for someone who's grieving or going through something, you just need to be there and just create that safe space. Exactly. That's, that's it. Because that's all I needed. Because yeah. there's know, nothing. Know you know all the scriptures. Bible. Yeah. I know all the Bible you verses. Need, yeah. I know I have a direct line. <laughs> Child, <laughs> trust me. I know who to talk to. <laughs> I know exactly yeah. who to talk to. Um, you know, sometimes some of my friends would just come they would pray. Yeah. They know who's I don't pray at that point. They mm. knew I didn't. Yeah, I so pray. We'll pray so they would for come, you. they would pray, and then we'd just sit. And that's it. And that would be enough for me. Because that's just all I needed. I sure. just needed presence. Yeah. And I needed warmth. And I just needed a safe space. Sure. And that, to me, was healing. Yeah. Not so much the words that they were, that mm. were spoken, but presence Do you even hear warmth. the words people say? Really? Really, not really, no. not really. Yeah, it just comes in one ear yeah, and goes out the other. Sure. Mm. <laughs> How did you realize you you're crawling out and you're getting into and and I know, like you said, it, you don't stop, but I think you've gotten you started seeing a bit of light. How did you realize there's 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 light? When did you start realizing there's actually light? Let me get up. Let me let me try again. Let me mm. find my voice again. Yeah. For me, I, the realization came through being in the presence of the Lord. Okay. Um, because mm -hmm. I had tried so hard to avoid mm. being in God's presence, mm. um, when I finally found myself <laughs> there. in the presence of God, I felt this incredible warmth and incredible embrace. Yeah. That I can't even explain. What does that look like? What does the presence of God look like? <sighs> Man. For you. 
for me, mm. what does the presence of God look like? Or feel like? I don't even know how to explain it or to express it. It's almost like... It's like being in, it's like being in a desert, mm -hmm. in a dry place, and being so thirsty, and then suddenly a glass of water appears. Uh -huh. okay. it's, it's refreshing... It's renewing, mm. it's it's fulfilling, mm. it's uplifting, mm. um, warm. Yeah, that's my uh, word. It's it's warm. It's cozy. It's complete. It's complete. complete. It's whole. Yeah. You know, um, that that is what the presence of God is like for me. Yeah. You know, it feels like after everything that goes on in our world, yeah. with everything, all of the noise. I suddenly find myself yeah. in the stillness, mm. in the presence of mm. the Most High, mm. where I am accepted, accepted, and where I am approved. Yeah, you know? I'm enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were telling me, so you found yourself in the presence when you were crawling out. Yeah, yeah. I found myself in the presence of God, and um, that for me was an eye opener. Okay, because. It was in that moment where I realized that, um, and and ironically, at that time, someone else was ministering. Someone okay. else was singing um, a song. And um, that was my be the beginning of my healing. Mm. And when I was in the presence of the Lord, God literally just spoke to me and said, but that's what you do to others. Sure, sure. You know, and it's it really became clearer mm. that the mandate hasn't ended. It's not done, yeah. It's not done mm. yet, mm. you know. Mm. There's still so many people that need healing, mm. still so many people who need to experience the presence of God. Mm. And, yeah, and that was it. Sure. And I picked myself up. Sometimes I would walk on stage and I'm broken <laughs> on the inside um, but I've learned that um, in our brokenness, that's where God does the most, yeah. man. Yeah. You know, when yeah. we come to him as we are, as broken and as wounded, he's able to heal me as he heals them. Others, yeah, yeah. At the same time. Yeah, there's yeah. relatability. Yeah. There's rela so much relatability in that. So how, um, how much more meaningful is what you do now. Do you feel like it's more meaningful now? Like it's, you said clearer. So yeah. does it feel like, okay, I got it. Like it's not just another uh, performance. Because I mean, if we're being fair, sometimes if you're singing the same song over and over, over, and over <laughs> at some point, it's, it's, it's a little tiring. It's a little tiring. <laughs> you know, it's not always butterflies. Yeah. Um, but how much different is it now? Even just post pandemic, post just, Everything's stopping. You stopping. Yeah. How much more meaningful is is everything? Is people to you? It's so much more meaningful because because I've been at my lowest. Yeah, and I understand what that ministry does to someone who's yeah. at their lowest. Yeah, I realize what's at stake. Ah, so I've learned not to take any opportunity lightly. For granted, yeah. I can't take it for granted, but I have to maximize every single chance I get. Sure. Because people are going through a lot, yeah. man. You don't get to not show up. Exactly. Yeah. I have to make sure that I show up even when I'm broken. Yeah. And I've learned that even when I'm broken, God still heals me even yeah. in those moments as well. Yeah. Because there's no way that I can be a glass yeah. and and God being the water, and he refreshes someone else, sure. um, the glass still gets the water yeah, as well. Yeah, so yeah. the glass will still get refreshed yeah, because yeah. the glass is carrying the water. Mm. You know, while God is um, making others drink, I also get the water as well yeah. while I'm just the, the vessel. The vessel, yeah. You know, and um, it, it, it really has opened my eyes and made me so much more serious yeah. about what I do. Sure, yeah. love that. Let's speak about being a businesswoman. How have you remained so, how have you sustained it? And I'm now talking as a business. How have you been able to sustain your business, remain relevant, and not be a broke artist? <laughs> <laughs> like, girl, what did you do? How have you done it? <laughs> oh, yo, I don't want to be broke. Yeah. Girl. 
Hakuna demand. I, I always have a si I, I love money. I, I love what <laughs> money too. affords us. Many, right? Many, many. We like you. <laughs> <laughs> I think um, we learned a lot of lessons earlier. Is it? Did you make big mistakes? Big time. Like, like big, big, we, we gonna go hungry mistakes, take our car mistakes. Big time. <gasps> big time. Really? We've seen the sheriff a couple of times. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. I promise you. We've seen the sheriff a couple of times. At some stage, um, my house was even um, out on auction. No. At some stage. Yep. Almost lost our house. And by almost, so I mean like. So when you out here ministering. Almost. When we almost lost. Literally. Almost. Like literally, there was a date that was already set for the auctioning of my house. Because the bank was like. We Kelly. are taking it. <laughs> you guys aren't paying. We are taking it. And um, it's amazing how God is still able to restore, <laughs> even in the midst of all of that. <laughs> but, you know, ironically, during that time, my mother was like, there's no way you're going to lose your house. <laughs> my mother, she was <laughs> like, just no. pray. She was like, no. So I called her. I'm like panicking. I'm like, ma, figure Sherry, figure. And lady, man, I'm so sorry. Oh, my mom, I'm tired. I'm so sorry. We're tired. Thank you. And yeah. my mom was like, hi, Bo, okay. relax. Not you. You're not going to lose your house. I'm like, how? Is that it? She's like, yeah, you're not going to lose your house. Okay, bye. What do you even Why? do when you're being told you're losing your house? Like, do you start packing? But where no are you packing ways. to? <laughs> where are we going? Like, what are we, where are we going? Like, what do you do? Do you start looking for... I, I don't know. What do you do? Dude, it was insane. Um, estate agencies calling us and saying, you know, there's an easier way. You can just sell it. We were like, no, but we don't want to sell our home. So you're still stubborn. You know? we, yeah, we're still stubborn. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't want to sell. Yeah. They're like, no, at Look, least if you sell, you make some you, money. You actually make some money yeah. and you'll be able, you know. And we're like, no, but we don't want to sell. We want to keep this for our kids. Yeah. You know, we want this this to be an inheritance for our children. We can't just sell it sure. and let it go. And um, yeah, but you know, God came through. Thank God. We still have that property. Have you learned the lessons? We did. Okay. We learned the lesson. Okay. We did what learn. are the lessons? But, what is the but you know, okay. do you, But you know what it was? Okay. How it happened once, um, we recorded Spirits in Life yes. um, in 2015. That probably I was is, there. <laughs> <laughs> that probably is the most expensive album we've ever recorded. It cost it us. It looked it, yeah. A lot of money, yeah. money we didn't have. Oh. Um, and um, I remember to the point that um, even for rehearsals, you know, us musicians, we love food. Musicians yeah. love food. So at a rehearsal, you always have to provide food. Because yeah. we didn't even have money to buy stuff, to buy food. We couldn't buy Nando's because most of the time Nando's. It's Nando's, was, yeah. yeah, sorts of run out, yeah. You know, but it wasn't even that. I literally would wake up early hours in the morning. And cook. And cook. I would wake up and go, oh, I need to see, <laughs> keep a chicken or whatever I'd be making for that day. Oh, my. And cook for everybody. I think I'd wake up at like three in the morning and cook for everybody and then put everything in pots and then pack my plates for my house and my cutlery, glasses, and then get it drinky because at least we could get that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Buy it drinky yeah. and put it in the car and then go to rehearsal. And then I'd still have to perform at rehearsal after after being the waking chef. up at three in the morning and cooking for everybody, I'd still have to perform in in the rehearsal. And then at the end of the day, and I'm like I'm exhausted when I get home. I'd go probably like take a quick shower yeah. and go back to bed so that I can wake, wake up, up at again three and do the again the next day. I love that you're sharing this because <clears throat> when people say I want to be like you, they must realize what it is. To it's be like lot. you. <laughs> yeah. It's a lot. It's a lot. You have to pay the price. You have to pay the price. I think that that is for everybody. Yeah. Everybody. Whatever, whatever you're doing. Whatever you want to do, whatever you want to achieve. Doesn't come Whatever cheap. dream you have, whatever vision you have. Yeah. It's not going to come easy. Yeah. You have to pay the price. Yeah. And the price really and truly determines whether this is for you yeah or it's not yeah thank you so much for watching today's episode i hope it was impactful and that you enjoyed it to check out the full episode all you have to do is become a wisdom and wellness member by clicking the join button if not you're more than welcome to catch the full audio version on any of your podcast platforms thank you for watching and thank you for being a wisdom and wellness member.